We have some major news here for the next generation of consoles, both Xbox and PlayStation. All right, so this week has been hilarious because we've seen the rumors that Xbox is stopping the hardware. I mean, anytime there's negative Xbox news, you have people popping up just hoping and praying that the Xbox console will go away, never to be seen again, thinking like that would be a good thing for the gaming industry. Not only would that be bad, everybody else would end up getting a worse experience on whatever platform they're playing on because competition would be gone. You'd have PlayStation controlling the complete prices for hardware in that specific space where they're competing against Xbox. You'd also have them be able to just utilize their PlayStation store even worse. If you haven't been following, PlayStation is under multiple lawsuits because of their anti-consumer practices. So if you think that would get better if Xbox goes away, I think you're sorely mistaken on that front. But luckily, from what we've seen so far, and of course, this could change in the future because Microsoft's a trillion, multi-trillion dollar company and things are fluid and things change. But as of right now, there is a next-gen console. They're going full speed ahead with it. And we continuously are getting leaks here on the Magnus, the Xbox Magnus, which sounds like it is going to be a, a hugely powerful console. And it, it looks like they are going to be going along what has me excited, which is going to be that hybrid place that hybrid selection of consoles where you're playing your pc you're playing your xbox all of that stuff and then on top of that we also have sony who teased their new gpu tech with amd they had a video that did come out so we're going to take a look at all of that stuff so the xbox magnix here leak suggests that the next xbox next console will be powerful and expensive and maybe a hybrid device so this is a kind of all aligned what i was thinking it was going to happen in the next gen this could be a $1,000 console like that is not out of the question at this point, especially from the launch of the PS5 Pro and the price of that. I can really only see these manufacturers going up higher at this point as those are selling. And it seems like they don't want to subsidize the cost of this anymore as the console space itself is a stagnated market. When that happens, things will be get more expensive. They'll make the device for the people that want to buy it but they're not going to go out there and think this is going to be a mass selling device. And here is where it comes from. This is from Moore's Law is Dead. And, and this is some of the stuff that he is saying here when it comes to the Magnus, the Xbox Next Console APU. It says, it will be the largest APU used in gaming console in history. It will total roughly 408 millimeters squared. That's about 13% larger than the Xbox Series X and the Xbox One X's die size. It has a 46% larger die than the monolithic one that will be used in the PlayStation 6 home console. So yeah, it should be stronger than the PlayStation 6. But at the same time, it will also be more expensive because of this larger size and its use of bridge dies and like a larger RAM capacity compared to the PS6, at least if you want to work well as a PC console hybrid. Now, I am in the place where I do consider myself that hardcore hyper enthusiast gamer that I want the newest and the latest and greatest of pretty much anything that does come out. Do I buy everything? No, because I would be broke if I literally bought everything. But when it comes to the console coming out every seven to eight years, I will buy it on day one. And the price of it won't really be something that I care that much about. I will spend the $1,000 on this next console because I've had eight years to kind of save up for it, trade in things. And there's a lot of things that go towards that. So if Xbox is coming out here with an insanely expensive console between $700 and $1,000 at launch, I feel like this is going to be an item that is going to be a luxury item. They're expecting not to sell like an insane amount right away. And this may only be available through Xbox themselves. Maybe they're kind of trying to place it like what Apple does with their iPhones. And the fact that you really at launch, get everyone orders them through Apple. They're extremely expensive and they do sell well, but maybe that's kind of the route that Xbox is thinking of going here with their next Xbox console. Unless by the time it does release, they can get those costs down and bring it within like the $600 range. I think that is a more reasonable launching point for something that does sound like it's this powerful, they would probably be losing money on it. And that is the other thing. I don't know if Xbox wants to subsidize the cost of the console anymore, but for the, for what we're seeing here, how powerful it could be. If it is a hybrid where I'm getting all my PC stuff in, it gives you that console experience where you're loading up the console, easy to navigate and easy to jump into your games. And it, to me, that sounds like it's going to be a very good device question is, do people want to spend that type of money? Like what I've said, what we've seen with the PS5 Pro, people did buy it. They did buy it at launch. They're still buying it. 
And then you look at the PC handheld market. People sold out the Lenovo Legion Go Do. They sold out the ROG Xbox LAX. So these expensive pieces of hardware do have a market. And maybe they're also looking at that as they go ahead and build up the next Xbox. Now he continues on here and says, that's okay. I think because this time around, Xbox is going to be much more than a console. It should also be something that can run more than just Xbox apps and challenge the PC gaming market at least somewhat directly. And the PC gaming market is already expensive to get into. It says, and although it is using a large for a console APU die, I will say that compared to the PC Mega APUs, it's actually a tad smaller. And therefore, yes, while I don't see Xbox Magnus as likely being a direct competitor to the next-gen PlayStation console anymore due to how much more Magnus will cost to make than the PS6 compared to PC gaming systems, I actually think it will be much more favorable. Xbox Magnus is going to be pretty expensive from the perspective of a console. I think it will definitely cost more than 800. I don't think it needs to cost more than 1200. And that is, I think that is a relatively spot on take in terms of the cost. I, I do think this thing may be coming in at around 850, maybe 900, or they go all the way up to 1000. That's where I think the cost of this thing will land going into the next gen. I know right away that will turn a lot of people off who will ignore it. But I do think because Xbox has, they know they lost the console wars against PlayStation, their next market that they're going to try to tap into more, and this is so obvious based off of the prices of Game Pass, is PC. They can see the growth in PC. And if that means just get, grabbing a small percentage of the PC market with their hardware, that could mean millions and millions of sales of it, where there will be people out there, if they can access their Steam stuff, but they want a nice, good looking, good functioning, easy to use at home box where maybe they want to sit back on their couch and play games every once in a while. This could be the place for them to get into that where they're playing Steam, they're playing their Xbox stuff. If they have now with the Xbox Play Anywhere and the Xbox ecosystem opening up to PC. I know so many people who are only Steam that now use both and, and I can see them seeing those numbers and thinking that they need to tap into that with their hardware. I think this will be a very, very interesting next generation of Xbox consoles. I'm actually very excited for what they are planning on doing here. If they can give us a good hybrid that's powerful, that will have long life cycle where games are running well for the future. You're getting, you're just never going to be a point where you're not getting that 60 FPS from games. Then yeah, I think this will be something that there is a big market for going into next gen. So the Magnus APU sounds like it is going to be big. It's going to be powerful and it is not set up to take on the PlayStation 6 directly, which from the Xbox and Microsoft business perspective, I think that is actually a very, very smart move by them. Now, Sony, they actually have teased their new GPU tech for the PlayStation 6. They are also working with AMD. AMD is dominating the console space here. But they put out a video here with Jack Wynn, the SVP and GM of AMD's computing and graphics group. And they have some interesting things to say here when it comes to the upcoming tech here for the PlayStation 6. So they say here that the technologies are still in the very early days and only exist in simulation right now. So PS6 is years away. It's, it's going to be a while before a PS6 does come out. I mean, they're still supporting the PS4 in many ways, and the PS5 is going to be supported for years uh, after the PS6 releases, and they kind of confirm that here. But they say much of it boils down to how the companies are working to make it easier for the future GPUs to handle graphics upscaling, ray tracing, and the super intensive path tracing techniques used to make game world look more realistic. Mark Cerny here says, the current approach has reached its limit. Sony is working with AMD to integrate components of its next-gen RDNA architecture in future consoles, and AMD's Win introduced Radiance cores, similar in theory to NVIDIA's RT cores, that are dedicated to handling ray tracing and path tracing. And in addition to Sony's new console having the new cores, they will almost certainly be built into AMD's future desktop GPUs. And you can see all of this stuff being put into multiple devices. If they're being put into the desktop GPUs, they could also, all the stuff more than likely is going to be put into the Xbox stuff because they're all using AMD. Like it, it'll be something that I think benefits basically everybody. 
They say the Radiance core supposedly deliver a speed boost to performance, freeing up other components to quickly process shaders and textures instead of having to spin so many plates, so to speak. And this new GPU tech will also benefit from advancements in AMD's FSR Redstone, its latest AI-assisted upscaling technology, such as neural radiance caching, as well as likely whatever upscaling tech comes after that. And another key area of improvement is compression, which will free up more bandwidth for GPUs to run future games at peak performance and fidelity. And they're also improving on Delta color compression technique, which is used on the PS5 and the PS5 Pro to compress textures and render targets. And the next hero will utilize the new, more efficient technique called universal compression that compresses everything in the pipeline. Now, Jack Wynn does say that this will let the GPU deliver more detail, higher frame rates, and greater efficiency. So that is kind of what they're working on. They're giving you that heads up that this next GPU is going to do some great things, make great games run better with having good performance and having less stuttering and less having to worry about whether ray tracing is going to go in there and just ruin the absolute performance that you're feeling on the game, all of those things. And that makes sense. We are now five years, six years going into this generation by the time these come out, probably seven, eight years. So there's all that time of advancement in technology that we should be getting a nice boost in the overall shine of these games with the ray tracing always on 60 frames per second, all of that type of stuff, especially if they're going to be going for the more powerful thing. I do think the PlayStation 6, with everything that we are hearing and seeing about it, is still going to be expensive. I do think the PS6 will come in at that floor price of the PS5 Pro, so $700, $750. I don't think they're going to go any lower than that. So they are also in a place here where... At that price, you're still targeting the luxury market in a sense. You're still targeting the hyper enthusiastic gamers. And I, I do believe that could shrink their overall market. We will have to see what the total sales were of the PS5 Pro. How many people upgraded? How many did it sell overall? But going into next gen to get the PS6, there will be way bigger of an overlap here of people waiting to pick up the PS6. And if it's anything like this generation, that may not even be the best move because prices for consoles have gone up. A lot changes in the next couple of years. The console market, as I said earlier, is stagnated. It's not the same that it used to be. We're not going to be getting here 200, 300, 400 dollar consoles where they're trying to have a broad reach or everybody picks one up whether they play one game or whether they play hundreds of games. It is going to be a lot more focused on the hardcore enthusiasts of the market for that generation because games are just more accessible in many different ways. And the statistics are out there that people don't care anymore as much as we used to. My age of gamers about the box. They care more about is it convenient to access their games and is it on the device that they do currently have. So it's a completely different market. But I think for if you're a fan of consoles and you start saving the money now, you're probably going to get an amazing console experience going to next gen pretty much wherever you do play. But on the video there, if you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you're new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.